Oh, yeah, it's the sweet, sweet sounds of another episode of the Social Distance Drinking Club. This time, I've been looking forward to this one. We've got our friend Charlie Mears from Magnanimous Brewing Company out in Tampa, Florida. Uh, I wish I had some of his beer in my hands right now, but the magical beer fairy has not arrived yet uh, due to COVID, I think. I think. <laughs> Did you say this time you're looking forward to this one it's as if you've never looked forward to our other shows well no i look backwards towards those now they're over it's different you see and now i look forward i'm looking forward at the moment. What so, just back here. Wait, wait, let me tell you here <laughs> thanks for joining us everybody uh we'll be talking all things magnanimous and charlie and uh sledgehammers you'll figure out why sledgehammers are involved in just a couple of minutes but as always we start the show by asking what are you drinking tell us in the comments i've got uh i finally got around to this can because i forgot it was in the fridge the extra, extra juicy bits. Ooh. I forgot it was in the fridge, man. I've been busy. I'm sorry. That is that is not a die in the back of the fridge beer, and you know it. But I, you, you recognize it. We're not going to shame you. It's okay. Unacceptable. It's completely unacceptable. I totally understand. Yeah. Hey, but you know what? In the spirit of the fact, like, let's think about the word magnanimous for a second. Not only do I want to know what you're drinking, what are you drinking, and what's something good going on in your life? That's what I want to know from the folks at home. And you, my good friends. And you, my good friends. I, I will follow up what I was drinking with. I, I'm back to doing virtual events. Well, it, back to doing events, but they're virtual. But hey, you know, it's work again. Back to work. It's been a lot of fun. That's awesome. So, yeah. Gentlemen, what about you? Mr. Ledford, what do you got? Uh, I, I, I just felt like I was missing out on Monday. I had a tombstone beer, but I did not have an Italian pill. So I rectified that situation and God, look at the, look at the sweet, sweet clarity on that beer. Um, and, uh, got a hundred on my Spanish midterm today. So the oldest you student continues kicking ass. So let's, let's go. I mean, vamos. <laughs> Adam Green. Um, I am drinking this stout from Back Bay Brewing Co. in Farmhouse called 5 p.m. Stout. My neighbor dropped this off for me. He was out back east, and he dropped this off as a birthday present for me because you know something good? I guess I get older on Saturday, and because of that, I'll be going to San Diego tomorrow to kind of celebrate and enjoy the many beer offerings that city has to offer. Oh. And the fact that it's probably still going to be 100 degrees for a few more days in Phoenix, so get the hell out while you can. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This is delicious. Nice. You know, one other good thing happened uh, in both Adam's and my world today is that we got to do a Hamilton-themed Peloton ride today, and it was awesome. That's all I'm going to say. Our Hamilton puns were happening before the ride, and I think we only each got one in because then it's just like, we moved on. Do you have the 10 Peloton commandments? I'd like to know what they are. No, I just asked if he was ready for Hamel spin. And then I said, I'm not giving away my spot. Throwing away my spot. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh my God. Both of you so much right now. <laughs> Hamel spin already pissed me off. <laughs> like, but, but this guy is such a beast on the bike though like i had a good ride and i think i was in the top uh, like 12 percent or not even better than that i was like rated like 2400 something out of like the 24,000 people that did it ledford was in like the top 1200. Like, yeah, I, got, uh, I got a top five percent today it felt good it felt really good i i, I mean, it felt strong and that was just a motivational ride i mean like it's just hamilton is already amazing see it on What's it on Disney Plus? See it there if you've never seen it. But uh, God, it's so good. It's so I, good. I was Peggy to his Angelica, basically. <laughs> I might have to be with <laughs> Anyways, hey guys, we're here to talk beer and stuff too, I promise. <laughs> and Peggy. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get Hamel Spin out of my head. Uh, like we said, thank you guys for joining us. Tell us what you're drinking in the comments. If it's iced tea or NyQuil, I don't care. Just let me know what you happen to be imbibing at the moment, because I'm always curious. Uh, I did see Jeff Cooley said uh, Ricilla for the first time. Cheers. What is, what is Ricilla? I don't know that one. I'd Google it, but my hands are busy. 
That's I can anyway, see Charlie backstage right now. Uh, backstage, I say, uh, and he was drinking water, but I also saw a beer, and I'm curious what it is. So we're gonna get to that. I say, uh, why why delay? But before we bring Charlie in, I want to play the the best. The, well, the intro the intro video is worth a million bucks. Sorry, this is the intro. Here it is. It's 60 seconds. Enjoy yourselves. These trench strains, whoever cut these trench strains, you got to move them. About three millimeters to the left, perfect. Now the bathrooms, right here, don't use the bathrooms. We're going to move them here. When we move them there, you can use them. Number one, number two, okay? Two bathrooms, all right? Go yeah, no, see those sconces? I didn't even know what sconces were until I started this project. I can show you something. Has anybody seen my laser pointer? Mike, I found your laser pointer. Oh, this is a pry bar, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Back to work. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, help us welcome Mr. Charlie Mears, Mr. Magnanimous himself. Thanks Howdy. for joining us, man. Yeah, man. Witness for the world. That was amazing, by the way. Absolutely <laughs> amazing. The, the Magnanimous Brewing... Uh, Instagram and Facebook are a treasure trove of genius short videos. <laughs> we try. Uh, that's kind of one of the things we wanted to do. Like Mike and I, um, you know, obviously the beer comes first and community comes. Actually, community comes first, beer comes second. But then the entertainment part of it, we're both pretty tuned into. And I think that's always going to be a part of what we do. And uh yeah, we, it's, we we try it. We, we think we're funny sometimes. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys nailed that one. I saw a little, a little cameo of uh, our friend of the show, Earl Watford, uh, yeah. when he was uh, out in Tampa playing for the Buccaneers. I, I can't believe you gave that man a sledgehammer and said, this will come to our brewery. Help yourself. <laughs> well, well, to be fair, we all left the room immediately as soon as we gave it to him. That We were nowhere near him. Poor, poor camera guy. It was just him and Earl at a sledgehammer. Yeah. Uh, poor, poor James, uh, who can be found on Instagram as Craft Beer Asian. Uh, <laughs> okay. He's uh, that James was terrified the entire time, but he he earned his he earned his keep that day. Craft right. beer, craft beer Asian. I can't believe that wasn't taken already when he went to uh, pull that one. Yeah, I uh, I, I agree. Um, he was the I, first guy, I guess. I don't know. Something like craft beer Libyan is not taken either. But now that I've said it out loud, someone's going to go park on it. Excuse me for a second. I need to. Adam will become beer Libyan. It doesn't make any sense, but here we are. Well, uh, speaking of working hard on something, this was uh, a long time coming for you. You had planned it, but it, I know it's it's been on the radar for at least a couple of years from what I've heard in the last couple of times we've spoken. Yeah. And you guys just opened last week. Yeah, yeah, it'll be uh, two weeks on Friday. Um, so when we shot that video, it was June of last year. Um, and it, we didn't put it out till October of uh, last year as well, just because uh, that's when we got our permits. So we didn't want anybody chasing us down for uh, doing any early construction. Um, but we had had that building since August of 18. It's just, it's a slow process, um, but, you know, we got there. We're selling beer now. It's pretty, pretty cool. It's such guys, a we didn't get there. You guys, you're in Tampa Bay, right? You're in Florida. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just north of downtown Tampa. Nice. Yeah. So everything I know about uh, Tampa breweries means that I'm envisioning that you have a, a small house in a small residential neighborhood and that's where you uh, have the lines go through people's driveways and stuff. Uh, that's that's the uh, preferred business plan. Um, I think uh, that's that's kind of how it's turned. What it's turned into the last couple of years. Uh, is, your, is your chair angry for some reason? I just uh, can't. Uh, no. our, our chair is malevolent. 
we got a couple of those. Uh, now those guys, uh, Ryan, who owns Angry Chair, and the guys that work there, really good friends of ours. Uh, actually, my partner uh, Mike, his wife uh, works at Angry Chair, and uh, so we we we've been friends with those guys for a long time. I've known Ryan since Ryan ran a brass tap up in Wesley Chapel, and then started oh, wow. Angry Chair not too long after that. Um, yeah, we we actually took over a uh, uh, Salvation Army Worship Center for our brewery, so not quite a house, but close enough. We got a photo here. Let's see. Aha! Uh -huh. Is that it or not? <laughs> that's it. That's the one. Oh, that's cool looking. Yeah, it was uh, far more drab before we took it over with that face on the side. It was very pale. Um, but yeah, that was. We walked in the front door of that thing and saw the. Uh, that's our gas meter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing right now, guys? Uh, Whoops. <laughs> that's our gas meter. <laughs> uh, that was a very important part of this situation because we were waiting on that that damn thing forever. Um, but yeah, we took that thing over and, or the, uh, we took over the building and just saw the, the roof in there. Like it's got this big beer hall kind of feel to it. And it's unlike anything in the Tampa Bay area, which was pretty important to us because a lot of breweries in the Bay area, they just kind of, for their tasting rooms, it's a lot of sheetrock and caps on the wall. And that's the tasting room. And we wanted it to be an experience uh, in the tasting room. And then obviously we wanted to make world-class beer as well. Um, so that we tried to tie it all together, which, you know, sometimes it's kind of an afterthought, but we wanted to go ahead with that. Now, prior to Magnanimous, uh, I know you were one other place before this and then Cycle as well, right? Right. Uh, I think when we had met was when you were at Cycle, when you guys had done a collab with Arizona Wilderness out here in Phoenix. Yes. For those of you watching that are uh, Arizona followers, Charlie is no stranger to Arizona or the Arizona beer scene by any means. And yeah. probably many of the Arizona dive bars as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, 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 know, I know some of the haunts around that pla those pla your, your area. Uh, yeah. Me and Arcadia know each other very well at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> that, that, the pub and grub. <laughs> yeah. Oh, me and the old pub and grub. It's a, it's a waffle house with six taps, <laughs> ten taps, or whatever the hell they got going on there. And half a carpet. Yeah. <laughs> if you like, can't prove that carpet's there. No. Nope. I, I, I challenge you right now. You sure as hell can. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like this was not something that you just kind of threw together quickly, though. Obviously, you have your experience in the industry, and you said you got the permits, what, in 2018? Or something like yes. Magnetic, like what led to this point in terms of like you want to open up this brewery in Tampa Bay and do it the way you're doing it? Uh, so I guess you can kind of go back. Uh, I kind of started working in the business, not working in the business in uh, 06. I would um, uh, volunteer at Sweetwater and Terrapin, lived up in Athens, Georgia. Uh, volunteered there for a while because no one really paid you to work in breweries back then uh unless you were skilled and i certainly wasn't that at that point oh nice did you i we'll, we'll get back to the uga thing <laughs> um but uh from there ran a couple of bottle shops and a bar up in uh up in athens um and kind of did some uh bringing some beer back and forth to tampa and back can't get too much into that one <laughs> uh, uh, did you go did you go both eastbound and down when uh, uh, the beer was going <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, listen we can ask a lot of questions here but you know, <laughs> the answers are not that important as, as long as as long as the uh the parables are there we're fine um but yeah then uh uh at some point uh joey from cigar city joey redner um uh pretty popular figure down here. He asked me if I would be the taste room manager at Cigar City. Uh, did that for about seven months. Uh, at, there is where I met Mike Lucasina, um, who is my current, is my business partner, one of one of my business partners. Uh, was there for about seven months, had to move back home for some family stuff. Uh, ended up moving back to Florida because founders asked if I wanted to be their Florida rep. 
then went to be the sales director at Cycle. And along the way, Mike and I kind of brainstormed together and figured out this magnanimous thing. Uh, in the meantime, when I was doing what I was doing, uh, Mike was at Seventh Sun and then at Coppertail. And in that time period uh, became what I believe is one of the best brewers on the East Coast. Um, and there, there are various beers out there that you've probably had of his that didn't necessarily have his name on them, but they were his and they're badass. And they're now, you know, variations of those are in our brewery and he's kicking all sorts of ass. Well, I mean, you're, you're talking about, I mean, just in that short list of breweries that you name between the two of you, even if just you learned by osmosis, <laughs> that would already be enough to, to have a, a very good idea of what's going to come out of there. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, that was, I'm, that was always sort of my thing. Like, you know, I, I started out, you know, volunteering at Sweetwater and Terrapin and just, that's where a lot of the learning by osmosis came from. And I kind of learned that I wasn't, you know, either either I was pretty snooty or I wasn't good enough to lie to anybody because I could only deal with high quality stuff. Um, <laughs> I know there's been some breweries that I've been offered jobs from and I just said no that because I just can't lie to anybody. And uh, it's like I have to I have to be able to love what I'm a part of. And that's sort of been my through line for my entire career uh, in the beer business. And that's, you know, and same with Mike, like if you look at what Mike's done, it's just Cigar City, Seven Sun, Coppertail. And then you look at mine, it's Cycle, Founders, Cigar City, Terrapin, Sweetwater. It's like, you know, yeah, there's only only good things in there by, by and large. So. so if we take it back to the clerk's philosophy, neither of you would have been a contractor on the Death Star is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no. no <laughs> I've, I've had plenty of opportunities to be a contractor on the Death Star. I, uh, I decided to, to to be a janitor on a Cadillac instead. <laughs> I think that's fair. Oh, my, oh my God! Can we do a collaboration brew? And can we please call it janitor on the Cadillac? <laughs> I'll get on a plane as soon as you guys are settled in. We'll give you a year or two. It's fine. But then we're making janitor on a Cadillac. <laughs> we're there. We're there. Yeah. Perfect. I'm in. <laughs> So let's let's talk magnanimous. Obviously, people ask you that question all the time, but it's such an interesting and wonderful name. Like, where? How did you land on that? How did that come about? So I heard that word the first time when I was twelve. I was watching. Uh, uh, this is another through line with my thing. I'm a big wrestling guy. I heard it uh, on Monday Night Raw one night. I think I, I think it was uh, Triple H said it at some point or another. And uh, it's one of the, it's like, I didn't know what it meant. And then I looked it up and obviously it's to be gracious and kind to all those who are lesser than you and weaker than you, you know, for lack of a better term, there's, there are better definitions of it, but it's just be good to everybody. And that's always been something I've tried to do my entire life. And, you know, I've got, uh, you know, various family members that were, were that way with me growing up. And I was just like, kind of, let's just act like them. And uh, that was always just something I, I try to strive to be. And then when the opportunity came, I brought it up to Mike. It's like, what about magnanimous? And it's like, you know, he was like, it's a lot of syllables. It's like, I think I got, I'm, a, I'm an English major. It's like, yeah, let's put some dots in there. We'll <laughs> you know? And uh, so, I, and I think that's, I don't know. It's a good, it's a good way to go about things. Cause if you're magnanimous and everything else kind of falls into place over time. Yeah. Even if you don't know how to spell magnanimous, at yeah. the very least, this is a time where people are very good to each other. So yeah. might be a little redundant in today's climate, but even still it is a good brewery name. Yeah. I think. I, yeah. And uh, it was, it's odd that with the timing that we opened up right in the middle of a time where people should be more magnanimous. And uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that we're going to be any influence on that at all, but it, it's, uh, you know, if it makes one person be cool, then that would be neat. It could be worse, Charlie. <laughs> you could have chosen to name your brewery Corona. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that would have been, <laughs> been a terrible uh, time. Yeah, and, and we would have gotten a cease and desist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
actually, so funny story. We're uh, we're working on a, a corn logger currently, and uh, uh, you know we we have a logger that we made called Crown. It's just a light logger, and um, we were looking at what the Spanish word for crown is and it's corona so we're not going to be doing that for the corn nope <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think you could have gotten away with it virus or no virus the corona logger is not going to work out for no. you <laughs> no not not one iota see i was still i was still stuck on uh, on wrestling and i thought you said like corn locker like it was some like yeah. like lock kind of move and i was like i would drink corn locker like yeah. all day long that's that's later on <laughs> with a name like Magnanimous, and obviously the background you guys have, like what kind of beers, what kind of style should we expect from Magnanimous Brewing? Um, we're going to be all over the place. Uh, ultimately, you know, we, we get asked a lot, like, what are your uh, cores going to be and whatnot? And we, we tell people, it's like, oh, you're going to tell us what our cores are because you're going to buy what whatever you buy. We're going to keep making. We're not going to try and force a square peg in a round hole. But we're, you know, we started out with two loggers, three IPAs, uh, a couple of porters, a couple of imperial stouts, six sours with fruit in them. So we're all over the place. We're just going to make beer that we enjoy drinking. Um, I doubt you'll ever see a black IPA come from us or an American barley wine, but um, <laughs> there'll be a lot of English barley wines that pop up here and there. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we'll, we'll be all over the place. Um, so, yeah. Well, that just speaks to the successful rebranding of American Barley Wine as Triple IPA. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, Devil Dancer from Founders. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh, I want to real quick pull up some photos of the uh, beers that you guys did open up with. Uh, also, I, I saw that you guys have Dead Awake. Is that out yet? Because I need that. Uh, it came out last Friday. Nice. Well, I'll show everybody a photo of that first, actually. So there's Dead Awake right there. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah. is that is that like the Dead Alive font? Is that what I'm seeing there? Uh, I think I think that is Dead Alive. So we have a guy named Geiger that does all our logos and labels and whatnot. Uh, and he uh, used to do the labels for Cigar City, and. Uh, he he comes up with pretty much everything. Him and Mike uh, collaborate on a lot of those things, and they that that particular guy is. Uh, I, I was a big fan of that one, but I do believe it is uh, got got some dead alive feel to it. Well, hey, if you haven't seen Dead Alive. You should immediately try to find uh, a way to watch Dead Alive. And if you like that kind of gore horror weird silly funny then go see turbo kid because <laughs> it is the spiritual successor and it's so good and i know, I know we're not talking about like gory horror movies right now but okay i'm, 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 I'm okay with it man we can talk gory horror movies i just <laughs> Let's I just want to quickly touch on this though because this is this is a testament to some of the things that are going on in the brains behind magnanimous um these all look delicious and colorful but one of them is called mommy gains yeah uh <laughs> so that that was born from a uh a group text uh that was the only one we didn't have a name for and that was again geiger uh he's he said uh what was the, uh, it it was strawberry peach mango um and, and uh that came out strawberry peach mango and geiger's like it sounds like something that uh that a very bored housewife would make right after she got done with her Peloton class. And then I just immediately responded with mommy gains. And <laughs> that, that was just, just ran off the screen. <laughs> so There's nothing wrong with Peloton, okay? <laughs> yeah. I completely agree. I, 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 dude, I do yoga uh, a lot and, and Peloton, but that was uh, very much a, a Geiger thing. So these vanilla tactics, how do I get that here? <laughs> <laughs> uh so i that that beer we just did uh 15 gallons of each of them uh i think we're going to bottle that um at some point in the near future uh, we'll we just gotta figure it out uh, because with that one every time we want to use a different vanilla bean so we're going to be testing out the different ones in the taste room whichever one people seem to like the most we'll probably bottle that one was and it, then just kind of follow in from that. 
was it cycle who had like a different vanilla style like was it like the weekday series or the week series i think they had like it was different vanilla styles like it's kind of like a neat thing like you have that base and then change it up just a little bit and people will notice the difference and you guys get to play around and make new beers each time so they did that was after i left but while i was there i was the one that or i was we doug and i came up with the idea for the different coffee yeah. series for the third anniversary i believe it was um and we uh dealt with mostra out of san diego and the idea was to do a different coffee from every continent um except that australia apparently doesn't make very good coffee so they just got some indonesian uh, uh single origin instead but from that we that the vanilla thing was uh going to happen and i think it happened the year that i left but yeah. later in that year that's cool we say Australia doesn't make very good coffee, but it's just, they don't grow good coffee. I'm sure there's a barista in Australia who took offense to that. Like, yeah. I've been trained to make yeah. good coffee. Yeah, his name's Tad, and he sounds like a wonderful guy. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll spell your name wrong on purpose. It's oh, just 100%. 100%. I've never right. seen, that's the only time I've ever seen a W in my name, but it was Tad, and he was in Australia. <laughs> I've never even been there. <laughs> well, that, that big bearded bogan don't care about me coffee anymore. <laughs> Hey, go to Ohio. Did you call him a big bearded bogan? <laughs> it was the most alliterative thing I could think for a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, that's fair. But just that also I, wasn't quite Australian. It was, <laughs> hey, it was more Australian than uh, your like Boston accent. <laughs> you. <laughs> it was it was Australian by way of Utah somehow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that accent was more Boston than your Boston. But, uh, <laughs> Era. <laughs> you, do, you do any accents, Charlie? I, uh, yeah, I, I do some here and there. They'll they'll yeah. pop up. Because because I was told I can't. I, I even if I try to do a Boston accent now, they've they've worked it out of me. I won't do it anymore. I won't even try. I've you given, never did it before, anyway. I, <laughs> see what I mean? Like I'm, of all the accents I can do, for some reason I can't sound like a Boston. Then, what uh, what is, what does your Boston accent sound like? I'm not doing it anymore. It doesn't happen. It's been, we went we spent we spent six months of me trying. It's not gonna. Happen. That's a good question, Charlie Mears. I, I feel like uh, I feel like Yusuf is doing you a disservice if he doesn't at least ask you who Juice Lord is and his best Boston accent. I'm not doing it. Not doing well, he's this guy that just grows down the road and all the fucking guys just he's, uh, he makes all the juice. <laughs> I mean, there's the answer. What are you looking at me for? There he goes. See? There he goes. Well, always, <laughs> we, we do have to talk about uh, the Juice Lord, and I've got the photo here I want to pull up of this. You guys put out a ton of hilarious commercials for your beers, and so, you mentioned you did yoga. One of them is you doing yoga uh, in, I think it's like Path to Inner or something. I got to uh, Inner Path to Outer Space. Inner Path to Outer Space. Uh, but we'll start with Juice Lord because the commercial that I will definitely repost, if you guys haven't seen it, I think we already put it on the page, uh, asks, who is the Juice Lord? And then someone is sitting there smashing oranges and saying to themselves, reaffirming that they are the Juice Lord. So, so that is Mike. That is my business partner, Mike, uh, who, who uh, is the brains behind all the beers um, at, at Magnanimous. Uh, that's that's me. I don't even know where that came from. He just wanted to do like this Gallagher type thing. And it's like, <laughs> it's brilliant. And um, I think on the spot when we were filming everything, I was like, hey, I'm going to tear apart this grapefruit and I'm going to be the other juice lord. And we're just going to do this whole thing. Who's the juice lord uh, for the rest <laughs> of our lives? <laughs> so what you just told me is we'll never find out who the juice lord is. Ah, I mean, that, you, you can't prove that. I mean... I'm thinking you guys have to have like a double variant release of the same beer that is called I Am the Juice Lord. And then it's like just two different colored cans, you know, but it's the same name. There's, we got some ideas. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, it. I'll settle for Juice Jester. I don't need to be a lord. <laughs> but then I'll be the Juice Jester. <laughs> juice Jester, yeah. yeah like, we, got, fine. We, we got some ideas for, uh, for some variations and different names and things of that nature, but it'll all kind of fall into that lord. Uh, deal. Nice. Can, any us, can any of us be juice knights? Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to take some work on your behalf, uh, Yusuf, but we'll we'll get you there. 
Okay. All right. I'll work. <laughs> I, mean, I thought we did some pretty good work out in Tampa, man. You know? I, I, I agree. I just think that there's there's more to be done uh, to be a juice knight. Fair enough. You're, you're, uh, a, juice, you're a juice squire as it stands. <laughs> I will accept the title as it has been bestowed upon me from you directly. A juice yeah. squire. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah, you don't you don't want all the scuttlebutt being that you're an up jumped juice knight and didn't earn it. That I mean that would just be <laughs> yeah. you'd that never put it down. It's preposterous. That that's like all those commercials I keep seeing online of like you can buy your own one square foot plot of land in Scotland and be named a lord. For oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you can do that. I i I did that years ago. I'm sorry. This to be uh, to be fair, there's no juice there though. It is, it is Lord Charlie Mears now. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Lord Charlie Mears. Lord Charlie of Mears? Ooh. Mm. He's, he's, supposed being, he's supposed to be the king of Mears. <laughs> the champagne of Mears. Ooh. That's, Charlie, that's when, I, when I came out to uh, visit a couple times, you were working in a well, oh yeah, is it time for that second beer pour? Please it's do. Totally. We we passed thirty minutes. This is a socially acceptable time to open beer number two. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna open beer number two as well. But we never asked Charlie what he was drinking. Oh, uh, so this isn't going to be the most exciting thing because you guys can get this out here as well. But I always keep some in the fridge. It's uh, Maduro from Cigar City. Good it's beer. Just a uh, great beer. That it's. Um, I'm a big brown ale porter guy. And whatever the best brown ale or porter is, I can generally get at my local shop. I, I buy, and uh, that's the one I can I can enjoy it and not think a whole shit ton about it, and just you know drink it. Brown ales are really underserved in the market. I feel like mm -hmm. too. they're under they're they're, they're phenomenal. Yeah, uh, I agree. They're uh, it's one of my it's. Like I said, brown ale porter, probably my favorite style. Um, and there's not a lot of them out there, which is kind of cool. You got to search for them. And sometimes it's hard because a lot of them get really old and not great by the time you get a hold of them. But that just makes the good ones even better. Um, you know, we're, we got some of those that will be coming out too. And I'm very excited about that because, by God, we need one. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the brewery, but they're in Tennessee, um, like Memphis area. And I was in a I was in a bar, and um, I think it's called "You'll Never Make Friends with a Brown Ale" because the idea is that like it can be the best beer possible, and it just no one buys it. Is that, you know? uh, <laughs> is that Wiseacre? I think it. I think it might be Wiseacre. Yeah. I think it might be Wiseacre. They're like the brewery in Memphis. I think they're I'm, yeah, they're, uh, yeah. The, them and High Cotton are the only two that I had. That's it. Yeah. 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 So uh, I want to switch gears, Charlie. We're going to switch from beer to talk about your love of professional wrestling. Last night yeah. after the Tuesday night football game, because that's a thing now. <laughs> it's, a, it's a tradition like none other. Uh, yeah, exactly. yeah. Everybody loves Tuesday family football. Yeah. It's perfect day for wings. Yeah. Um, I saw like a recap of the WWE draft. Yeah. That happened. I don't know how much you keep up or kept up recently with uh, wrestling, but yeah, uh, I still keep up with it. Um, WWE, not so much. It's kind of garbage right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not very well written, uh, but. Uh, AEW and New Japan, I watch a lot. It's more of an athletic contest, and the stories are kind of told in the ring. WWE, it's a – I don't even know what to tell you about it. It's uh, a soap opera. <laughs> it's, yeah, but it's but not it's even like soap opera. It's, it's a horribly written, pandering to the lowest common denominator soap opera now. It yeah. used to be fun and exciting. Like, yeah. I got into it in the in the Goldberg era – yeah. And, uh, and I just, I was like, I really was looking forward to Mondays most of the time. And then I tried to get back into it about five years ago. And I was like, this is hot garbage and I don't yeah. care. Yeah. And in their defense, it's a really terrible time right now. Cause there's not a crowd and a, like the crowd helps out a lot with professional wrestling. 
uh, even when there is terrible writing and over Trump storylines and whatnot, but it's uh, it wouldn't be great with without with the crowd. And it's definitely terrible when it's silent around the rink. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, even in their dumb Thunderdome situation they got, where they have all these people on their you know LED screens like looking in it like this. But I saw that. Wrestling. It's super crazy. I don't know if you guys. I know Adam Green. You said you don't watch uh, wrestling. I just. I listen. I don't either. I catch the highlights and stuff. But I looked at some LED I, screens. What? Where do you catch the highlights? Uh, YouTube. On, on YouTube or yesterday on FS1. If you were actually. Yeah. Really? Yep, FS1. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Wall says I only listen to wrestling. It's better but, that way. Yeah, it's currently it is unless. Like I said, New Japan, it's uh, probably hard to listen because um, it's in Japanese right now. I don't think any of the American guys are allowed to go over to Japan to call the show. So, <laughs> uh, for, for now, but Jerry the King Lawler might do a great job. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, He mostly just screams at the top of his lungs and talks oh, about that. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's uh, you got Jerry and you've got the other guy uh, with the cowboy hat. What's his uh, name? JR. Jim Ross. Yeah, Jim Ross, baby. Yeah. That guy is a legend. Yeah, <laughs> so he's in AEW, which is oh, uh, Earl, the uh, you know, all of our, our friend, all of our <laughs> all of us are friends with him. Yes. Um, Earl used to play for uh, the guy who owns AEW's dad, who is Shad Khan. Uh, owner of the Jaguars. Oh, who owns AEW? Yeah, his son owns uh, AEW. Um, so, so he, so that the Khan family owns a res professional wrestling organization and the entire city of Jacksonville. Yes. <laughs> yes, and and I think most of FedEx as well, if I'm not mistaken. Probably right. <laughs> yeah. Probably right. And a soccer yeah. team too, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. Hey, I gotta reposition my phone so I can plug it in. I'm very sorry about that, but give me like. Uh, 45 seconds. You have 45 seconds. After right. that, it's just it's over. <laughs> oh, there we go. Adam, you were making the face that Yusuf makes when we talk about Peloton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had friends growing up who were into wrestling, and like I was in the sports, like, and I guess we all have our things. And I know people my age who are still into wrestling, so I, I respect that. You know, it's it's entertainment like anything else. I mean, I do things for entertainment that others would judge me harshly for i understand that you know but i uh, yeah i just never got into wrestling like never been close to getting into it never cared wrestling's wrestling is like twitter if you try to understand it you're doing it wrong i mean i was a fan uh when i was younger so and i i actually get the nostalgia apparently there's a, doc a documentary i need to watch um called dark side of the ring that covers like all of the shit that was going on backstage and like in the underworld of wrestling. And Charlie, when he gets a chance to join us, I, I have to ask him if he's seen this documentary. Uh, he's repositioning himself now. <laughs> Play the Jeopardy song, then time him back in. Yeah, sure. Let me find it. Let me get it real quick. We don't have those sounders yet. What are we doing here? There's no soundboard. Listen, StreamYard, if you're listening, just give me like a separate window with a soundboard, okay? <laughs> I like I like what he turns into his. If you're listening, voice <laughs> for sponsorship, you know, I, it's like Streamyard. If you're listening, <laughs> <laughs> I know when to attempt to seduce the internet. Okay, man, I tell you, um, I don't know if you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys have watched uh, Deets and Mirror on Showtime, but they're hilarious. But they do a podcast uh, called the Bodega Boys, but it's almost unlistenable because of how how much they lean on that soundboard like, like I, I feel like that's a that's a dangerous tool in the hands of a, of a caffeinated uh, host but <laughs> what if we had a sounder that just said privilege check yeah, yeah. We I could get on board it. with that I could get on board with that. We haven't had to do it at all today, so I'm trying to figure out if Brett is the variable that forces privilege checks, or if Charlie is just our most humble guest. Yeah. <laughs> Bitcoin. <Good point. laughs> the other Charlie, favorite wrestler growing up. I will tell you. Uh, I'll actually give you top three. I will tell you my top three. Um, they were Shawn Michaels, um, oh, cool. 100%, the Ultimate Warrior, 
Also a must. Uh, and then Razor Ramon, because apparently he was just trash, which makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. Um, top three growing up, I would say uh, definitely Goldberg uh, as an adolescent. Uh, Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was the consummate baby face for an eight-year-old Charlie. And uh, Too Cold Scorpio, which is... Uh, not one that a lot of people talk about, but uh dude who did a bunch of flips and whatnot in the early 90s. And apparently um, in some podcasts I listen to now, they've uh, kind of revealed that he was very well endowed, which is weird to hear. But it happens. <laughs> you know, if, if you got it, uh, well, not in that arena. Don't flaunt it. But uh, I, yeah, I, please don't. I'm uh, trying to think you. of what the... The, what the wrestler's name was that was supposed to be like the well endowed sexy guy in the oh, Val Venus. Who was it? Yeah, Val Venus. Val Venus, yes. Yeah. And there was uh and, and there was like a Japanese wrestler, and this the scene is ingrained in my mind. It's as if it caused me severe trauma as a child. Uh there's like at the end of the of this particular episode of Raw, he walks out to Mal Venus, they have him pinned down and he pulls out a samurai sword and he goes, I chop it, chop it, you pee pee. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <it>. Wow. <laughs> just, and they cut the camera as he's coming down on his crotch with a samurai yeah. sword. So oh, I, I can't remember the that particular character's name. Uh, it was something San, like, cause obviously, you know, <laughs> WWE in the late nineties. But there was a guy, it, the name of the group was called Kai and Tai. Um, which I don't know what that means, but there was a guy there whose name was Dick, and his last name was T O G O. Dick to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, they pronounce it Togo, and he still wrestles Dick Togo, but it's spelled Dick to go. <laughs> I love it. I, little did he know he uh, he missed out on a prime opportunity to open a delivery business during the coronavirus. Same. So. Hey. He, he probably knows that, he, but he's stuck in Japan where that's not necessarily wanted or legal, or I don't know what's going on over there. No, they just would have called him Dick Togo son. That's it. You just have to, you have to put it in a vending machine and then it's totally legal in Japan. Ah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I would go, uh, I would go, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. And, and probably accurate for a lot of people. Ricky, Ricky says, I only know these guys from WCW versus NWO on the N64. Also, <laughs> video game. That was, a great, that was a great game. All right. So I'm going uh, Goldberg, uh, Rey Mysterio Jr., and uh, Booker T. I loved Booker T so much. And Booker T. Man. So good. Just had, had all the charisma, heel or face, always got a pop always was doing something interesting. I thought he brought so much to the show, m more than half of his, uh, you know, compatriots at that point, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, I love Booker T. Uh, him and his him and his big brother, Stevie Ray, who uh, yes. was not so talented. Mm, no, no. <laughs> Adam has returned and he's celebrating his vacationing early. Oh, is that the adventure still for the small batch? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. See you, buddy. Just wanted to try it, you know. We we were talking about our top three favorite wrestlers uh, from. Which is why I thought it was a good idea for me to leave. <laughs> I have nothing to add. Like, there's nothing. As a kid, you never watched wrestling. Never. Was it too much violence? Did your parents not let you play Mortal Kombat either? They didn't like us playing Mortal Kombat, but no, it had nothing to do with that. I just never cared. <laughs> like, no, like, wrestling was not my thing. Like I was into sports, you know. I watched football, basketball, baseball, and stuff. Like I played, but wrestling was just not a thing. Like my older brother was never into it, so I think that's part of why I never had a reason to get into it. And by the time I was old enough to get into things, like no one in my family was into wrestling, and none of my friends at that time were into wrestling, so it just wasn't a thing. Well, Adam, let's bring it back into your wheelhouse. Topic we discussed. What are your favorite three brown ales or porters? Mm. Well, <laughs> brown, I mean, there's not a lot of brown ales out there. Like, there's, right. there's only three, so you just have to name yeah. them. Well, we were, <laughs> Booker T. Brown Ale was really good. Uh, <laughs> 
we were at Helio Stone on Monday, and I was talking to one of the Helio Basin guys. I'm like, this one of the beers you guys made that I always love is your Imperial, like, nut brown. And they're like, we have a keg of our 2016 of that that we just found in the back. I'm like, like, would you like some? I'm like, yeah, I would. Like, that was really good. But out here, it's like, it was like, Oak Creek does a nut brown, which is fine. You know, but admittedly, I don't have too many that I think are totally memorable. But if I find a place like a brewery, like if I go to Magnanimous and there's a brown ale on draft, I'm going to order that because not a lot of places do that. So the ones that do, I kind of trust to make one that's like, I at least need to try it. But For yeah, sure. I mean, I like this, like you were saying, there's not a lot out there because they don't sell. It's not an IPA. It's not a stout. You know, it's not a sour. It's kind of like there. Um, what is Fat Tire considered? Uh, amber. amber ale. Amber ale. Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little. Yeah. But like, it's just not a popular style as you guys. At least in craft beer, like the nut brown browns aren't there. We should um, find you some Maduro for sure. Um, that's a good one. I have had that. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Occasionally in Arizona, we'll get uh, Bell's Best Brown Ale, which is that's really good. good. Yeah. Ooh. It's outside of that. I don't know. I don't know what regional brown ales we get. I don't think that there's actually a lot. It has to be somebody local that's making it. So Charlie, uh, you'll have to remind me how in tune with Tampa sports you are, but right now, obviously with the Stanley cup and lightning getting all excited, I can't remember where you were working uh, at the time pouring uh, beers that was right next to the, the stadium where they played uh, with lightning. Uh, for men in reality. That's what it was for the reality. Cool spot, by the way, guys. Container, shipping container, kind of co-op looking space. Yeah, it was uh, pretty rad. It's it's a rad space. A uh, little uh, a little bit too bougie sometimes. That area, not the not the bar. The bar was awesome. Um, yeah, and it was it was pretty pretty great. But there was a lot of uh, seltzer asking going on. You know, what's wrong with seltzers, Charlie? Ah, uh, just. Uh, <laughs> you, you've touched on a nerve, Charlie. You don't know this, but Yusuf uh, is still working on his uh, Truly sponsorship. Ah, tight. <laughs> <laughs> We're all that, sure very that, that, that joke almost cost me like two grand. I was about to just spit everything on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be there's gonna be gin and watermelon juice. Yes, I'm drinking gin and juice now, all over my laptop. I don't think I don't think that watermelon juice is what they were thinking when they originally wrote that song. It's hydrating, and I don't think Snoop Dogg would give a shit. So, like, if we're going for stereotypes, I'm nailing three right now. No. <laughs> we're okay. No, right now, right now, the only juice is Ocean Spray. Let's be honest. No. <laughs> Do they even give you ocean spray at nightclubs anymore? I'm pretty sure they just fill up a container with whatever they had was the frozen concentrate way in the back <laughs> and a hose. From the, you know, it's, it's probably they, they just get one of those gigantic cans that has ripples on the side that all the you know stuff on the bottom gets caught on on the way down. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> what? Uh, it's mostly coconut water, but I've, I've gotten some juice cans that are like orange juice. And it's like, there's no way I'm getting everything out of the bottom of this can. <laughs> Stuck there. Modern, modern IPAs. One could argue the same. Yeah. You know, like pour half and then swirl it around and pour the rest. Oh, oh don't I know it. <laughs> <laughs> so Charlie, I was saying t with, uh, with Tampa sports, obviously the lightning, right. Won the cup, and is Tampa Bay still in it? The Rays are the Rays are in the ALCS. I don't know what the yeah. score is tonight's game, but the Rays are great. Yeah, they were up uh, two games to none. I think I, I don't know. I don't. I pay attention to the NFL. Um, just uh, I, I enjoy the NFL. I, I watched I watched a lot of baseball growing up when I grew up in Georgia. But then, like the Braves won like twenty years in a row, so everybody in Georgia got bored. Um, so, uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's real. I, li I lived it. Um, Charlie, you don't know this, but I grew up in Georgia nice. and you're, you're bringing out my accent like hardcore right now. Just yeah. So you know that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it was a, it was a crazy thing. It's like, man, we had the worst baseball team in the world and they won for 20 years. And then it's like, ah, who gives a shit? And they great. We go to the playoffs every year and we can't sell out one game. Um, but 
yeah, it's yeah. I, I keep up with the NFL. Uh, I know what happens with the other sports. Um, I just I'm not. I don't know. Fandom is kind of crazy to me. How how people flip out over things, you know, like turnover cars and whatnot, and uh, which I know that's way 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 in the minority of fans. But they also getting drunk and thrown up all over the place. Not in the minority of fans, which uh, we we witnessed a little bit around Tampa here recently. Did they actually flip cars and get mad? Uh, not not here. Um, but the you know the the drinking a lot in public and going crazy. You know, it's I don't know. I just I just like sitting around and having a good time. We and, could we could swap some some war slash horror stories about the uh, the Athens area and their proclivities towards that. Yeah. Tell yeah. Yeah, running a liquor store in Athens, Georgia, you learn a whole bunch of things about everybody uh, because of that. Watched the lady uh, duct tape a pint of liquor to her uh, leg at 8.30 in the morning, uh, right before a home game once. And that was that was pretty cool. This is while you were working at the liquor store? Yeah, yeah. Did she mean. duct tape it after paying for it, just to let you know that she was taking that into the stadium with her? <laughs> she paid for it came back into the store and asked if we had any duct tape and then threw her leg up on the counter and made sure that she was able to sneak into the game. This was eight 30. The game didn't start till six. So I don't know what the hell she had going on in the next nine hours where this was needed. But. She was the security guard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make the most regional of all regional jokes, but that she was probably from Savannah or more specifically Tybee Island. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would guess. That's that hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he knows what I'm talking about. He was on Tybee time, people. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So somebody else laughed at it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Charlie, I saw that you posted uh, a little something called Wicked Sweet Baking Company. I'm going to pull that up real quick. Give us a quick uh, quick bit of info on Wicked Sweet. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, so my girlfriend, uh, who, bless her heart, is in bed right now because we went to a brewery opening before this. Uh, she is uber talented and has started this thing up where she's doing like a delivery service and uh, bakes some of the best stuff I've ever had in my life. Um, and she's delivering it around, around the Tampa Bay area. Um, and I implore anybody that lives around here to buy as much as they can, because I can't live off of desserts. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of, that's what, like, I just come home and she's like, yeah, there's like a couple of things in there. And I was like, ah, son of a bitch. I was hoping. What do you, what do you think is going to happen if she goes and delivers all of these? Is she, do you think she's not going to start making more desserts? <laughs> yeah. And that's a problem too. Like we're, it's, it's just going to be a problem, but I, I, it's a good problem. I mean, it's, uh, she, she enjoys it and she's an absolute badass as it pertains to this. Um, and yeah, she, uh, we I, I've taken these to a couple of friends around the Bay Area. Everybody flips out over them. I think it's going to end up being a pretty cool thing, um, and she deserves it because she's one of the best people I've ever known in my entire life. I, so. I see uh, you guys share similar personalities in terms of naming things since we've got my blood type is pumpkin spice here. <laughs> yeah, that was all her. Um, I did a little bit of the copy there like uh, on, on a couple of those things, but uh, she named everything. Um, and it's super creative. Um, and, uh, she went to culinary school, but she hasn't, uh, she, she has a job in healthcare right now. And I think that if she had her brother, she would, you know, enjoy this a little bit more. Um, and she's, like I said, absolute badass. I've never had anything quite like it before. Um, well, Next there's time a, oh, come on. If that, if that didn't make your mouths water, just seeing the menu, guys, here it is. I'll put it up again, too, uh, so we can give her a shout out. It's at Wicked Sweet Baking Co. on Instagram. And, you know, you can get stuff that looks like this, which is a little bit of Twix action, apparently. Yeah. I, I want uh, that in my mouth. Charlie, we're gonna we're gonna hit you up to uh, get her to mail us some stuff in. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys? When it, will it be cool enough? Like mid January, December, maybe yeah. late December. Yeah. yeah so um, February, we're totally gonna hit you up and maybe a little <laughs> slightly melted when it comes in. 
I got a I got a trebuchet, so I can probably get it out to you pretty quick in January. I'm just All right. that in there. perfect. It's just you gotta catch the right uh the right stream. The air, what do they call yeah. that slip stream, right? You just gotta get in that slip yeah. stream there. Yeah, there once, was, uh, once it cools off, uh, I'll send you guys some beer along with some treats with it. That was one of the reasons like, I wanted to send you guys beer for this, but I just, I don't trust thing, things. That, I've sent some beer to people over the last couple of months, just some test batches, and it it's taken three extra days on overnights. And yeah. I don't trust things right now. So It's hot AF. It's hot yeah. AF. It was 98 degrees today yeah. in Tucson, which means it was like 136 in Phoenix. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah, fire rains from the sky where you guys live. <laughs> Indeed. You know, at least here we have 100% humidity, so it's just like living in a wool sock. Which which explains why Easter was one of the last times he would come see us for several months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was there in July, which was, man, that was that was also very hot, uh, obviously. Yeah, but so at the, at the beginning of our non-soon. Yeah. <laughs> non-soon. <laughs> Well, Charlie, I appreciate it. I'm this year. I'm sorry. What'd you say, Alan? I say it's funny because we didn't really get a monsoon this year, so it was a non-soon. I was yes. explaining I, I, your joke in an ideally funny way, but making me. Hey, thanks for being here, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> it's just an incredible time. Damn, damn fun. <laughs> Uh, Guys, you can check out uh, Magnanimous Brewing and follow the escapades, uh, which are, sh are sure to be hilarious. Uh, check them out at Magnanimous Brewing, at Magnanimous Fellas. Um, I like that you chose Magnanimous Fellas. It's not Magnanimous Individuals or Magnanimous uh, Mammals, since apparently everyone's <laughs> trying to just come up with one of them. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, it works out better that way. <laughs> In, indeed. Check them out, guys. Charlie, hang tight for just a couple of seconds after we finish the broadcast. Uh, we'll just wrap up uh, personally for two minutes after the show. And thank you guys for joining us. I, I look forward to coming back out to Tampa. I don't think that uh, just because Earl's not there uh, doesn't mean I'm not going to come back out there because I really enjoyed that city. And that was uh, last year was my first time coming out to Tampa proper, and I had a blast. So Awesome. Well, I got a place for you to stay whenever you come out, so just let me know. D done deal. Done deal, my friend. Thank you. And thank you guys for joining us for another episode. Magnanimous episode. A magnanimous episode. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, the Social Distance Drinking Club. We'll see you guys uh, on Sunday to talk foosball and things. Cheers. Woo.